June 21st, 2011. This is today's climate change update. I know I've been gone a few days. I'm taking some of my own advice and enjoying it while I can. Uh, great Father's Day weekend. I had a lot of fun. And uh, let's get back to reality, shall we? I haven't watched the news in a couple of days. And uh, what do you do? Um, the big Lando cane that's heading through the central United States right now, it is 11.44 p.m. Central Time, June 20th. As I'm recording this, um, the squall line is just hitting Des Moines, Iowa. And I expect as through the video goes, we shall get a lot of lightning and thunder and all of that extra excitement <clears throat> um, on the video. But I want to begin tonight in Fukushima. Um, of course, TEPCO and G are lying about what's going on. Um, three um, reactors melted down. Um, number four has been exploding steam and uh, strange lights and everything else. Um, the situation update 134 on the RSOE on the 20th. The Tokyo Electric Power Company has announced plans to open a main door at Unit 2 of Fukushima Diachi Nuclear Power Plant. Sunday's plan is aimed at ventilating contaminated air and allowing workers inside to set up equipment. They plan to establish a cooling system and reduce the risk of hydrogen explosions. Uh, the March 11th earthquake and tsunami knocked out power to the plant and incapacitating its crucial cooling systems. Uh, blah, 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 three reactors. And where does it go? Da, da, da. Today at 8 p.m. until 4 a.m. tomorrow, we will open the door partially to control the dust in the reactor building. Then at 4 a.m., we will open the door fully. We don't see any problems. Uh, the reactor suffered a torturous rupture, but this is but its outer containment building has survived and con contains moisture radioactivity. TEPCO wants to quickly inject nitrogen into the reactor to prevent hydrogen explosions like those that already blew off several roofs and walls at other units. The operator will leave the door partially open overnight before fully opening Monday morning. Officials claim the amount of radiation released into the air will be small enough to not pose any danger to human health. Meanwhile, more radioactive water is pooling in the tsunami-stricken nuclear plant as workers scramble to restart a key cleanup system, which was shut down on Saturday because the component reached a radioactivity limit faster than expected. Yeah, in five hours it topped out maximum. Um, and TEPCO aims to move the reactors to a stable cold shutdown state by early January. Yeah, right. What, 2050? Um, I also saw some videos today of Fukushima, the city, and how they are doing um, radioactive testing, and it is way above um, safe levels. This is 80 kilometers away from the um, plant, and um, all those millions of people, they don't have anywhere to put these people. And, of course, the government's lying. Over to the RSOE... Um, General, we've got flooding, of course, in the state of Missouri, Nebraska, and Iowa here where I am from. Uh, two nuclear power plants underwater or flooding. Um, the Fort Calhoun and the Cooper power plants, of course. Um, thank goodness the, the Fort Calhoun plant is shut down at the moment. Um, my local news is reporting that they have a big rubber... Um, they put a big rubber mat around the reactor, so even if the building does flood, it should be fine. That's what they're telling us here in Des Moines. Um, of course, Cooper um, is still operating. They're saying they're going to keep the reactor going until the water hits the doors. Um, and what the news isn't telling everybody is that uh, at... Where's the other one? Fort, uh, Fort Calhoun... Um, is also the storage place for spent fuel rods in the state of Nebraska. They have 20 years of spent fuel rods in open um, pools. And, of course, if this water floods over, it's not about a meltdown. It's about all this radioactive water washing downstream um, <clears throat> into the state of Missouri, um, down into the Mississippi, and out into the Gulf of Mexico, of course. So uh, we can only imagine what 
can happen if, if um, these nuclear pools bust loose. Uh, let's see, what else do we got going on? Of course, we have the forest fires in Texas, Arizona, uh, New Mexico, Colorado, Florida. Um, down south is just on fire, all the heat and whatnot. Uh, flooding in China continues, of course. They're having their own problems, an extreme um, event. Argentina, again, um, extreme weather with their volcano. And um, croplands covered in ash, and they're still dealing with that huge um, rift, six miles long, three miles wide. Um, shooting out of the South America, and that's affecting, uh, again, that's a climate changer on the Southern Hemisphere. Um, still affecting traffic and whatnot. Uh, what else is going on? Got a fire at an oil refinery in Croatia. Um, China's reporting a 5.2 earthquake that did uh, some damage and some injuries. Uh, forest fire in California. and uh, San Luis and Kern County. Uh, flooding in Saskatchewan, Canada. <clears throat> Chemical fire in Missouri. And of course all the gases and whatnot that come from those. Forest fire in Squaw Valley, California. Of course um, the volcanic activity in Indonesia. And let's not forget, what was her name? Hurricane Beatrice is now Category 1 off the coast of Mexico. But it's expecting to downsize to a tropical storm depression as it moves on up into the California area. Uh, Santa Cruz Islands, um, this is in the Solomon Islands, magnitude 6.1 earth, earthquake. This is off of earthchangescott.net. Uh, they've got the 5.2 magnitude quake hits Yunnan, injuring four in China. They've got a story, uh, climate change, food shortages, and economic crisis coming to a town near you. And that is about the understatement of the century. Um, 6.5 earthquake in Chile. <clears throat> they've got uh, our changing atmosphere photos and video footage of gigantic rotating roll clouds. And uh, again, there's these huge crowds, and they, they're actually showing them roll through and roll over. And uh, some kind of sometimes the pictures comes to you. A wedding photographer managed to luckily enough to step outside front door and witness this incredible scene. And of course, they got this huge roll cloud rolling through. And the funnel is a horizontal, and it does not connect to the ground. So basically, they're saying it's a sideways twister. U.S. River falls short of Nebraska nuke plant shutdown, and again, that's the Cooper plant. They're talking like they're not going to shut it down. Um, the river has to hit 100 and 902 feet above sea level at Brownville before officials will shut down the Cooper nuclear plant, which sits at 100, 903 feet. So, um, like I said, they're going to wait till the damn water hits the doors before they shut this thing down. And how long does it take that to cool down a nuclear reactor? How long? Well, they could just shut it right down. It's okie dokie, everybody. And what if these uh, one of these dams gives way up top, and they are really seriously in trouble in South Dakota, um, North Dakota, and Wyoming? These huge dams, um, just record amounts of water. Um, U.S. tornado death rates raised in 2011 to pre 1925 levels. No kidding. Uh, we we're just having, they had, what, 38, 39, I think was the last count off the Weather Channel, off this uh, Lando cane that's going on right now. And a spring of extremes like no other. Weather events unprecedented, scientists say. Washington, tornadoes, floods, wildfires, snowmelt, thunderstorms, drought. For Americans, it was a spring to remember. Uh, government weather researchers said yesterday that what similar extremes have occurred throughout modern American history, never before have they occurred in a single month as they did in April. 
The last time anything remotely like it happened was the spring of 1927, which also had tornadoes and flooding, said Harold Brooks of the Storm Prediction Center of Oklahoma. And uh, here it is May, and it's still ongoing. Or June, yeah, here it is June, my God, here it is late June. Um, and uh, over to the extinction protocol. The Ethiopian uh, Nibiru volcano causes environmental crisis in Ethiopia. Apparently nine villages are getting covered in ash, and uh, their potable water is polluted, and their fields are covered, and they're asking for a... Uh, Environmental help, I mean, they're, they're asking for help, food, water, medical supplies. Uh, the governor, the government's not coming through for them, so they're asking the UN for help. Um, just a crisis situation <clears throat> in Ethiopia. Of course, the earthquake in Chile. They've got a story about animal aggression. An Iowa woman was attacked and killed by a cow. Uh, apparently there were some calves in the field, and this is not unheard of, but very uncommon. <clears throat> uh, whether one of the cows got aggressive, they don't know why exactly, of course. Um, but uh, there were children involved on both sides of the fence. She had a child with her, and there were young calves in the, in the field. <clears throat> and uh, Indonesia's Mount Batur's volcanic lake changes color. Thousands of fish die. Uh, this big volcano is about to pop. An unusual natural phenomenon is causing concern for the communities living around the edge of Bali's Lake Batur at Kintamani. On Sunday, uh, the 19th, the waters of the lake that sits in a volcanic crater suddenly change colors to a whitish, whitish blue shade followed by the sudden death of thousands of fish living in the lake. According to villagers of the lakeside community, <clears throat> recounted that the lake suddenly changed color Sunday morning in the area surrounding the villages, uh, several villages. Shortly after the color change, thousands of fresh water fish, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so this, the sulfur release and gases, just, it's, it's killing the fish and this, this thing is just getting ready to go. Saudis dismiss U.S. concerns about future volcanic eruptions in the country, and I was telling you about the mud volcanoes going on in uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, Saudi Geological Survey has ruled out the possibility of any volcanic or seismic activity in the kingdom during the next two years. Uh, U.N. number of displaced people around the world hits 15-year high. No kidding with all the fires and flooding and everything else that's been going on around the planet. you got to remember, last summer was just epic, wasn't it? Pakistan, Russia, China, uh, here in the United States, of course. <clears throat> just craziness all the way around the world. And they've got the sunset of the EU, the glory that was Greece, the splendor that was Rome. And um, the economic crisis in Europe and the fall apart of the, the European Union uh, because everybody needs a bailout. Greece, Spain, Ireland, um, many, many more. Britain is on the list, but they won't admit it. America's breadbasket under increased assaults from natural disaster, of course. We have fires and floods and, and uh, nuclear power plants. Uh, levees are given away. Uh, more levees fall along the Missouri River, nuclear plant offline until the fall, to say the least. Um, I was watching a video where they're, they're going to re release, uh, they're releasing right now 150,000 um, feet per second, <clears throat> cubic feet per second or something, uh, off these dams in South um, Dakota, and um, they've increased it to 160,000. Uh, these levees are supposed to hold until August, and they are already failing left and right. Uh, my weather alert's just going crazy. That is about all I have for you today. And um, I'm just checking my radar real quick. Yeah, for sure, this, uh, this storm's right on top of us. So uh, be safe where you are and enjoy what you can. Thanks a lot.